we are going to show you how to make a preservative-free homemade jam using only fresh fruits and sugar, nothing else. Right, Tara? Yeah. First, we're going to wash our apricots. We have some fresh organic apricots, which will make our jam even sweeter. to these little ones. So see what we're doing, and remember, next time you do something like this, include your kids. They are wonderful little chefs, right? Right. Okay, let's get busy and start making jam. Do you like the size of our pot? Yeah, we are making a lot of jam. These little fingers can be really helpful in the kitchen. I like apricot jam. We are jamming. Jamming. This is going to be a lots of fun. Jamming. And I hope you like the jamming too. Yeah. <laughs> Look, hands are staying super busy. Look at them work. Our, our first team, their pot is almost gone. Right? Our my pot are is going filling up. Ooh, let's see whose hands are working the fastest, okay? First, we have Michaela over here. Wow, look at her go. She is, wow! And next to her is Eaton. Let's see how he's doing. Very good. And next is Kaya. Let's see Kaya's little, little hands in action. Go, Kaya. Very good. And oh, we are done! We're, We're done. done! Great job. We have our winners! We are done! We are done! I'm done! The wild bunch is outside having fun and Tara and I will continue to show you how to make this jam. So what Tara is doing here is just adding some raw sugar to our jam and this is the only thing we will be adding to jam. There will be no preservatives, uh, no other sweeteners, but the raw sugar. I don't have exact measurement of how much sugar to put in your uh, jam, but I usually go by um, adding about um, a quarter, quarter of the weight of my fruit. So you can go anywhere between 20 to 30 percent of sugar. It does sound quite a bit, but um, you consider that a store brand sometimes have about 50 percent of sugar in addition to preservatives and in addition to corn syrup. So with this, with some raw sugar and peaches, we're still creating much better and much healthier jam. And now we're just going to let it cook for the next few hours. We're going to bring this to a boil and then we're going to turn it down to medium and let it simmer for three to four hours until it's nice and thick like jam. Here's our hard working crew having fun and cleaning up. So much commotion going on around this house and so many happy noises if you can hear them in the background. We are about an hour, hour and a 15 minutes into cooking our jam and if you see things are kind of becoming uh, very liquidy and this is actually okay. And from this point on we're going to take our fire from medium high into um, medium low and let it simmer for another couple of hours. It smells delicious. It just the color, it's a beautiful golden, and it smells just right. We are here into our second hour of cooking, and um, if you come closer, I'm going to show you all the foam that we had in the beginning is gone, and you can see how much jam has evaporated. We started here, and now we're all the way down, and we're going to let it cook for another hour, and uh, allow jam to thicken, and uh, I think with the... Uh, um, constant steering. If you see uh, a lot of uh, moisture is evaporating and that's the whole point of uh, making a good jam. It's to leave it and make it as thick as possible. You hear the background noise? <laughs> Kids are still having a lot of fun. It's a really fun day today here. And um, yes, yeah, so uh, into the third hour you should be uh, watching and making sure it doesn't burn and continue to steer and this will help jam to thicken faster. 
For those of you who might think that um, GM takes too long and it's not worth the time, I want to reassure you that it's worth every minute. And uh, you can see us here steering a lot, which actually we haven't done. Uh, we went on and had some uh, good time with kids. We made a lunch, enjoyed lunch together, just came and occasionally steered GM. But um, now into a third hour, we will spend a little bit more time just to make sure that we get the right consistency and that our GM doesn't burn. So don't get discouraged. As you can see, we started out with a very light orange color and it's now turned into this deep, beautiful reddish orange color. getting ready and I'm going to show you what we did with our jars. We washed them, I used a little bit of bleach just to, um, to make sure that they're really well disinfected, rinse them thoroughly and I'm going to put them in an oven for about 10 minutes on 125. So let me show you what we got in here. Our jars are ready, washed and clean and I'm just going to turn the oven on for about 25 and we'll let, it, let them sit in there for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're just about done. My friend Tara will tell you how much fun we had here. <laughs> Tara, was this fun? It was a great time and so easy. All we did was have to pit our apricots. We didn't have to peel them or anything and as you can see there's no sign of skins. We didn't have to mash it. It's just this beautiful consistency. So, so easy. And now the funnest part. We are ready to start pouring it into our cans. If you remember, we have our jars in the oven. They are semi-warm. Uh, 125 I said for about 15 to 20 minutes. They're pretty hot, Ooh, so be careful. Whew. I should have done that with my bare hands. <laughs> However, um, here's a little tip. Now, now we're gonna be pouring our hot jam in a can, so it's good to have a little dish like this underneath so the hot jam doesn't actually go in your hands. If you do miss, it will go in a pot and this way it will make it much easier and safer for you to pour jam in your cans. Okay, here it goes up first. It's truly beautiful. It smells wonderful and it looks great. It has the right texture. And here's another little trick that I want to share with you. Okay, lids are very hot too. Okay, so we're just gonna and a good idea is to use glove or a kitchen towel. Squeeze it very tight and watch this. We're gonna put our baby in a little monkey bed. And the reason we're gonna do that is we're gonna let him sit overnight, well covered, so the heat will continue with the cooking process. And also this will preserve our jam much better than if we would not keep it in this little blanket. Are you ready to see how our jam looks like? Yeah! Okay, promise to be patient. <laughs> yes! Yes, yes! Okay. Okay. Because I have a very, very hot stuff here and these jars are very hot. So please, no, no touching. Okay, look at this stuff. Look at this. Can I try some? Yes. Unless I'll have you try some in a few minutes. I just want to take a look. And what do you think, guys, this would be good to serve on? What kind of stuff can we put on here? Bread crackers. Yes. How about what I made? Smell this. Hmm? On honey toast. On toast. On toast. With honey. Do you remember what we have inside here? No. Apricots. And what else? Anything else? Lemon. No. Anything else? Uh, eggs. Eggs? No. Anything else? Apple. <laughs> Only eggs. Apricots and sugar. And sugar. And nothing I else. I was right. Make it right. And our toughest critic here is trying our jam. So guys, what do you think about it? It's great. Good, great. Great? I love it. Why do you like it? Because the apricots are so sweet and they make it taste good. Oh, good. Now can I have another scoop, please? Me too, can I have another mm -hmm. scoop? 